All right, we are wrapping up special procedures with a review of the advanced modalities that you'll find in the radiology department. So here's the list of the ones that I'd like to touch on. Um, they require an additional training certification, or some of them you have to go back and get formal education for. So not all of them you can cross into with just um, your x-ray degree. All right, so CT is one of the ones that you can cross train on. You can uh, do on the job training for it. It's commonly called, you know, CT or CAT scan. No, there's no cats involved. Um, the In CT, the x-ray beam, it moves around a circle in, um, going around the body and that's called the gantry. As you can see it labeled here, um, they lie down on the bed and the bed sort of slides in. They can get a lot of different views, different planes, um, the information can be displayed in 2D and um, 3D. There's even some advanced um, image reconstruction that they're able to do, which I think is um, really amazing if you do get to see one. But the radiation dose is significantly increased compared to x-ray. Also, the technologist's responsibilities are more advanced. Um, there's requirements for checking patient laboratory values. Um, most of your CT, CT techs are placing IVs. Starting contrast, they have to watch for patient reactions, and the reactions are much more likely in CT because of the amount and um, speed of the contrast being used. The O-arm is a portable CT scanner. Um, we have one in the OR, and your neurosurgeons um, have found it to be very useful. It works just like a CT scanner. It is <laughs> a little bit clunky to drive around, um, but definitely a, a benefit to your neurosurgeons in the OR. Your MRI, this is the one um, that uses a strong magnet or a strong magnetic field. There's no radiation involved. Again, they can get different planes um, for imaging and more advanced um, imaging than your diagnostic x-ray. A lot of your patients though have uh, a hard time going in it because of the claustrophobic concerns and there are long exams. Your interventional radiology, is another option. This is also an area where you can cross train. You are sort of a combo of a surgical tech combined with a radiology tech. You work uh, very closely with the surgeons. You're doing invasive treatments. They're utilizing that image subtraction, which um, as you know, subtracts the bones out of the image like we're looking at down here. So they can see, um, you know, veins, vessels, varices, whatever they're trying to visualize with the contrast. They'll do um, angioplasty, which will repair or unblock the blood vessels. There might be uh, placement of stents. Throm thrombolysis is dissolving blood clots, the embolization uh, to block the blood flow, and then ablations and also biopsies are done here. There is interventional radiology OR specific too. Um, they do some pretty incredible procedures there. So if you get a chance, go uh, do a visit. But um, again, higher dose in IR. Mammography. Uh, this is another one you can cross train into. It does not require additional education uh, or formal education, but it's an additional certification. And this is specific to um, breast tissue and breast imaging, trying to... Um, catch breast cancer or any other breast diseases in the earliest stages. There's also a surgical area of mammography where the biopsies are done. The cardiac cath lab is another area similar to that of um, IR, but this one you're specifically assisting a cardiologist and you're involved with the invasive heart procedures. So if they um, need to put contrast through um, again, you're working very closely with those um, cardiologists. It's a sterile environment, um, so involving maybe stents and um, surgical implements as well. Bone density or bone densitometry is uh, another. You could do this as on the job training as well. This is an evaluation of how dense the patient's bones are. It has a bunch of names. It might be um, bone density or DEXA scan, which is dual energy x-ray absorbimentary. <laughs> it's a really long name. Anyway, DEXA or DXA also. Um, it's a very small dose of ionizing radiation. It uses something called a fan beam. 
And primarily, they're looking um, to evaluate the density of the bone. In most patients, we're looking for osteoporosis. Um, we can do a couple areas, as you'll see here, this patient, they're being evaluated for their lumbar spine. We usually do two areas at least, so lumbar spine and one of the hips. If they've had um, hip replacements and we can't use the hips, we'll do the forearm, um, sometimes things like that. So uh, DEXA is looking for density of bone and very low dose. Nuclear medicine is a specialty area where the technologists are doing an injection of a radioactive material. And so these technologists are the ones that wear those, um, the ring dosimeters because they're doing injections of this material and they're holding it in their hands and it's usually encased um, in a protective barrier and that's how it's transferred. But we do a lot of VCUGs on pediatrics in our area. A lot of the patients, if they need a follow-up, go for a nuclear medicine one. And if you look here, it looks very similar, right? So here's the bladder is what we're looking at. And then you can see the reflux going up into the kidney. It does not look as detailed as ours does in fluoroscopy, but if they're just doing a follow-up and or they're looking for someone within the family, a sibling, if a sibling had it, maybe they're looking to see if someone else does, they might choose the nuclear medicine scan as well. So they'll cath the child just like we will, um, inject this and then do their scans. The PET scan, positron <laughs> emission tomography, um, it's usually combined, it's historically a nuclear medicine scan, but they have combined it with CT, and um, I think most recently even combining with MRI. But either way, a special dye, which contains a radioactive tracer, is injected. They could be swallowed, injected through, say, a vein in the arm, and then the organs of interest are going to absorb the tracer, namely mostly cancer areas, um, but it could be areas um, involving the heart, brain disorders, brain tumors, um, and you know other cancer areas. This is a picture that I would know, along with that nuclear medicine picture as well. Okay, ultrasound, as you know, is using high frequency sound waves, so there's no radiation here. Ultrasound is not an on-the-job training. You would have to go back for formal education on ultrasound. There are some options, I believe, through the ASRT um, for different areas of ultrasound, so you'd have to look into that. But they're going to use something that's called a transducer, and it uses sound waves to create their images. Radiation therapy. So and this is a, another formal education you would need to go to. This is not something you could on the job train for. Um, but your radiation therapists are going to deliver concentrated radiation therapy, usually to a tumor or area that they're trying to shrink or eliminate. They are um, an integral part of oncology teams that are treating um, patients for cancer. What should we know? So on your ART content spec list, it said that you should be knowledgeable of other modalities. So we have to know some basic information. If we know CAT scan is higher dose and um, it can do a variety of different slices or sagittal coronal planes, there is possibility for reconstruction images. MRI is no radiation, it uses a strong magnet. MAMO breast imaging, it uses small focal spot, low KVP to obtain those. Sonography, no radiation again, sound waves. Nuclear medicine, the radioactive isotope is injected. Then PET is that, you know, historic nuke med scan combined with the CT. Again, there's a tracer injected and it's got a highlight. And usually the PET scan might be in color, but it might be that black and white image too. Um, and then bone densitometry is again, the really low radiation and how dense are the bones. This is a chart that I had found of basic dose knowledge. Um, so it compares exams um, done via CT or diagnostic x-ray. It gives you an example of, say, a lumbar spine. On average, what uh, dose would be, and then it compares it to how long you would need to be exposed to background radiation to equal that. And so knowing sort of how to put these in order, 
MRI is always no radiation. Depths are your bone density. Again, super low. Chest x-ray is about 0.1 millisievert. Mammos, 0.21. And then as we get to fluoroscopy, CT, and then PET, these are going to be our bigger doses. So when in doubt, CT and PET are going to be your highest or at the end. PET, obviously the whole body versus, um, you know, specific areas would be more. But this was just to give you an idea. So a chest x-ray, your average chest x-ray, it says 0.1 millisieverts, and that's equal to 10 days of background radiation. Um, your um, PET scan, which gives us 22.7 millisieverts, and that's of the whole body, is equal to 3.3 years of background radiation. So just having a general idea of what they are, what they use, and um, how the dose compares to diagnostic x-ray might help us um, with answering some of those questions on your ART regarding, you know, knowledge of other modalities. So, um, you know, again, there's always alternate routes you could take. You could be an educator, like me. Uh, you could be program director. There's clinical coordinator, clinical instructors, lots of opportunities as a travel tech. Some facilities have a quality control technologist. You could go forward in your education and become a radiologist, a radio, radiologist assistant, sorry, tripped over that, RA. Different than PA, specific to radiology. Um, you can move on to an equipment rep. You could, you know, travel around and help techs with new equipment that they're getting. Um, you could work in the radiation safety department. Some radiation safety departments um, hire on technologists as part of their team. You would have to be probably paired up with a physicist and to learn all of that. But again, um, radiology is a stepping stone or I call it a, you know, a diving board. You can hop onto these you know, advanced modalities, or you could, you know, train in different areas. You could go back to school and, you know, be multi-trained or advance into any of these things. So there's a lot of doors that open with radiology tech. And so that's just um, some options that you have 